What's up, guys? Betting Bananas is back. Welcome to Betting Bananas with your hosts, the Ruthless L. Wagman, Ryan the Corner Man Quinn, and Dave Van Auken. Look at that ten thousand dollar intro. Uh, next time when that intro ends, we're gonna you're gonna see Ryan and L on the screen. But I didn't leave them. I left them off for right now, so I can say something for thirty seconds. I'm gonna try to make L. Wagman cry real quick, uh, but not really. No, I just you know, L fought last week, so I'm gonna rip the bandaid off once and be done with it, guys. I am an L. Wagman guy. Uh, Fight Bananas is a pro L. Wagman media site, and Ben and Bananas is L. Wagman home for as long as she has us. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it. We love her. Uh, we can't wait to see her back. And the 105ers should be scared forever because L Wagman's coming. So, all right, here we go. Here comes L Wagman. L, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm glad we're back. I know. I missed us. I missed this. It's been like weeks. We had hurricanes and off weeks and fights. Missed us. Also, uh, one of my favorite guys on this planet, big time Yankee fan, Bellator vet, the cornerman Ryan Quinn. Ryan, how are you, sir? I think I'm the one that's crying. That was super sweet what you said coming on. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, I'm dude, good. I, Thank I'm you. I'm on the socials. I see so much stuff and it's like, there's just no sugar coating. I have my favorites and it is what it is. And if it's L or Jillian or, or whoever, right? Like uh, one of my best friends, John Radford won a fight and then lost the fight. And every time like one of my people maybe don't have a great Saturday or Friday, like they, they, they come after like fight bananas in the messages. It's like, guys, it, it happens. And uh, I'm still going to support our people, my people, you know, crazy, crazy world. Yeah. But all right, we're back. Um, last week we had to deal with hurricanes and fights. It was just a weird week. And then UFC was off. So we had a little two-week hiatus, uh, but it feels good to be back. It really does. I can't wait. This is an underrated card. It's a little appetizer for next week's mega UFC pay-per-view, UFC 280. We'll get into that maybe at the end or next week. But uh, let's just kind of get into it. You guys ready for the underdog plays? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, L. Wagman, what is your underdog for UFC Vegas 62 Grasso versus Vivian Arigio? I got to be honest, I don't have an underdog this week. I feel like the lines are pretty solid. I, I there's not there's not one that I'm I'm sure about. I know I know some people were throwing around uh Serkinov a little bit, but I Alonzo's a very dangerous guy. I think he's probably your most likely underdog to get a win this weekend, but I'm I'm rolling with the favorites this week. Okay, okay. Here how about here's one I'll, I'll throw out I, I like Jacob Mal Malcoon versus Nika Maximov. I think that's a pretty good dog right there. Um, you know, Maximov's the favorite, but minus 135. Jacob come back at 115, so it's not a crazy dog, but he is an underdog. Uh, Brandon Davis is back in the UFC, uh, plus 130. I like him a little spot. <laughs> it is tough. It's not a great underdog week. We talked about it all fair. Uh, you know, Cub is a big underdog in the co-main. I don't know about that. Brandon Royval. But he's fighting a really tough asker, an underrated yeah. fighter. And so, yeah, there's not a lot of great dog plays. So I, I do hear you. Ryan, you got one? You got an underdog for us? Man, it was tough. You know, I start – this whole car was tough with the underdog plays. And I, I, I had to go right at the top with Vivian Arujo over Alexis Grasso. Alexa Grasso. Wow. Um, I just – um, I'm not completely sold that a, a, a submission – first-round submission win over Joanna Wood is such a big deal. Um, I know she's looked good lately, Grasso, but I just think Arujo is tough. She's tough to finish on top of that. And um, I just really like her going the distance and edging her out in a, in a five-round fight. Wow. I was not expecting that. Every one I've talked to so far uh, this fight week, four or five days into it, it's been a huge Alexo Grasso week all week long. Uh, I've been even hearing uh, a finish by Grasso, maybe even gets her a title shot with Valentina. So um, that's pretty interesting. Okay. I'll, mm -hmm. Hey, you got to respect the cornerman. I like it. Mm -hmm. If uh, underdogs are a little uh, shaky, how about best bet? Um, you know, we have $100. We want to put it on this one singular bet. L, where are you taking us to? Where, where are we making money? Um, I'm going to disagree with Ryan right off the bat today. Oh, um, boy. The night is actually Alexa Grosso in over four and a half rounds. I think that I wrote it down. Uh, it's at plus 105 right now. And Love I, it. Here, here's my thought process here. Uh, like, 
I, I believe that these two fighters, like we have a classic striker versus grappler. And I do believe that in the past, each other's styles have been the other's kryptonite. But I think the level of grapplers that Alexa Grasso is losing to exceeds the level of strikers that Vivian Araujo is losing to. And I, I, we see Alexa Grasso make some major improvements. I do believe that Vivian is going to have a little bit of a size advantage. But Grasso, uh, Vivian is not necessarily, uh, she isn't always looking to advance on top. She, she, looks, she, she maintains position really, really well, but she isn't a huge finisher. And I think that we're going to see that happen as well. Uh, if she does get Alexa Grasso on top, I think that she can at least nullify long enough to survive the round. And I'm not sure that she's going to be able to get her down early enough in the rounds just with that in and out movement and that more impressive boxing. I, I really think that Alexa Grasso's style is going to be really difficult for Vivian Araujo. I don't see either girl finishing, to be honest. Um, I, uh, I'm all for a banana bet on this one. I, Why are you I taking it? Banana hats in a minute. Um, I, 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 I didn't hear a word she said. I just heard banana bet. And, uh, <laughs> Let's that. go. <laughs> oh, we're, we're back. That next week. I want you to remember that I'm still licking my wounds from my last loss. So just. Yeah. That in mind. <laughs> you brought it up. Not me. <laughs> I, it's funny you say I'm you, John Grasso, this week. I really am. I think it's actually um, when it first this week was around, she was 180, 190. She's up to like minus 220, 225 the last uh, couple times. So she's starting to get steamed up. Um, I agree. Al, I think you nailed it. I just think it's, it's not a great matchup kind of for either one, but it's, you know, Grasso's fought tougher than Vivian, and Vivian has not fought tougher than Grasso. So I just think there's a misconnect there. I love as Grasso, but Ryan, if you're man enough to take the first banana bet with you and L, just say, just say banana. We're in. Banana. <laughs> wow. Spit, there we go. Okay. Uh, Best bet. Grasso plus uh, over four and a half plus one hundred five. L, I love it. Ryan, what's your best bet on the board, my man? Oh my God. I can't believe this guy's still in the UFC. Uh, <laughs> Pete Rodriguez over Mike Jackson. I just, uh, I, I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around it. Like, and we just went over this whole debate over if Bo Nichols should be in the UFC because he's only got three fights, uh, but he's, he's only three and oh with the best wrestling, maybe top five best wrestlers the uh, UFC has ever seen. And, and then there's this guy, Mike Jackson. It's just like, I just like, uh, it reminds me wow. of the Simpsons episode where Homer was uh, boxing and then everyone just got tired of beating him up. And like, I, like this guy's still sticking around. Yeah. But uh, I just think that Pete Rodriguez is going to finish him. I just I think that's With it. You know, finish. Finish. Mike's not a young man either. Um, so I just uh, yeah, I just yeah, I got the four and one over the one, one and oh, one. <laughs> uh, I just uh, I, I could pay from it. Best bet of the night. I'm sure that the, the odds are pretty wide on that. I didn't even look. But uh, yeah, you'll he's a massive favorite. I saw it at the, yeah, he's at minus uh 700, but even the under mm -hmm. one and a half is minus 270. That's not bad. I gotta check yeah, out the pop score, but I bet you a finish, you know, you might get um Pete Rodriguez a minus around 250 or minus 300. And I have him finishing, I have him finishing. Yeah. I like that. No, I, I, I definitely agree. Uh, Rodriguez mm -hmm. is actually a tough guy, he's fought for icon twice. Um mm -hmm. His first fight, his debut was a short notice fight against, uh, I think, Jack Delmena, if I remember right. And he got pieced up pretty bad. But, like, just Jack's one of those things, the fight Jack on four days' notice. Short notice, yeah, you can't. Everyone yeah. will get pieced up. Like, that's mm -hmm. just, that was a bad spot for him. But I love it. Um, okay, so uh, I'm feeling this right now. We're back to our three fight parlays. Uh, you know, Christmas is coming up soon, guys. Halloween. So we need a little extra funds here at the Van Auken House. El Wagman, take it away. What's your three fight? Parlay. All right, let's go. So, first leg. Um, I'm going to agree with what you said earlier with Askar Askarov. I'm going to take him in over two and a half rounds. I do think that Brandon Royval is funky enough to maybe nullify some things on the ground, but I definitely think Askar is going to get him down. And I don't think that Brandon is going to be funky enough to scramble up or sub him off his back. So I think he might be able to nullify some of his top game for a little bit, just enough to chew up some clock time. But I definitely see, and if you want a little bit more, you can go for the prop with Askar Askarov by decision, but I'm going to go with him in over two and a half rounds. Um, yeah. My second leg is Jonathan Martinez. Um, man, I, I looked at this over and over, and it's just, Cub is getting slower. He's getting older. If you're going to take the 39-year-old thir veteran who's seasoned over the quick, 
fast striker. I mean, I know that Jonathan Martinez isn't quite the kickboxer that Giga is, but those, those kicks, those quick kicks are definitely something that Jonathan Martinez does really, really well. He also fights really well moving backwards. He's dangerous with the knees and elbows. Um, I wasn't sold on a finish on that one, but, um, so I'm just going with him in the second leg. And then for the third leg of my parlay, I have Piera Rodriguez and Sam Hughes going over two and a half rounds. Both girls are super tough. Neither girl is a huge finisher. I'm leaning towards Rodriguez as the winner, but I didn't quite, uh, I wasn't quite sold on that one. So I didn't go for a winner in that. I'm just going the over. All right. I just put that in the time machine real quick. I have it at uh, plus 270. You have the same L or did you do it yet? I, it was like, I think I had, when I looked, it was like plus 350. So okay. it went down a little bit, but. Okay. I like it. I like it. Um, I like the over. Like I said, yeah, we went off air on it. I really like John Martinez in that spot too. I, I In a weird way, I'm rooting for Cub. I wouldn't mind Cub with a, like an upset win. That'd be cool. I have no shade at him at all, but just long in the tooth. He's looked long in the tooth for the last couple of ones. So we see. That Askar, Askar versus Royval might be the fight of the night. That is an awesome fight. Really good fight. All right, Ryan, three fight parlay, my man. Take it away. <laughs> Ellie, you took a lot of. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we'll start right with I have uh, I have Jonathan Martinez over Cub Swanson. I just, you know, okay. John, Jonathan's winning three in a row. Um, Cub and I hate, I hate, I hate my input. You don't have me here for the inputs, but I, I got to go with it here. He's dropping down a weight class. I feel like when the older fighters do that, they're only doing that as like a false save. Oh, I got one more with the UFC before I could I, I get out of here. And I feel like that's what he's doing here. I don't even if the weight the weight cut goes good. You know, I, it reminds me of like when uh, uh, I I don't know how many fighters have we seen. Uh, Diego Sanchez is one of them, but there's another one back in the day. I can't think of his name. I'll think of it like right before we. But they cut down. They got that alien look to them because they cut too much weight when they walked to the cage. And uh, uh, Little Heathen, I, I can't think of his full name. Oh, Jeremy uh, Stevens. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. So that's 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 what I'm thinking of when he cut down. And um, uh, or not Jeremy Stevens, another Millage guy. I'm sorry. I, he 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 beat BJ Penn for the lightweight title, and then he lost to him. I can't think of it. Um, oh. But uh, anyway, all right. I, I made my point there. <laughs> um, and then I got um. Oh yeah, I got. Uh, Piero Rodriguez and Sam Hughes in the over, just two tough girls. Wow. I got, um, you know, I got uh, uh, more experience, you know, maybe a little bit more tougher fights too. But um, I just, uh, I don't see anyone finishing that fight. And then my third, my third leg, I got, um, sorry, I'm here. Where is it? I'm pronouncing the names wrong. Oh, yeah. Mana Martinez, I have over Brandon Davis. Brandon Davis, a little bit more experience. Um, from what I've seen from Mana, he's a pretty disciplined fighter, though. So I don't think the experience is really going to play out much. But He's training at Glory MMA. You know, as we know, I t- I'm very high on that gym, very high on what uh, everyone's doing over there. James Krause actually just shot him a text. He owes me a T-shirt. Um, and uh, I just I really like what we're going to see there. I think we're going to see a very disciplined, controlled win and uh, show the direction he's headed. All right. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, real quick, I do want to throw out same kind of thing. Short notice fight. Lucas Alexander from Orlando, Florida, Fusion XL. I watched him live four or five times in the regional show, does a lot of stuff for Dean Tour with Island Fights, uh, Anthony Showtime, Pettis Show, his debut, he was in the main event. He's beaten four UFC caliber guys outside the UFC. He's His stand-up to me is, you know, dynamite. It's a very, it's awkward and different. And if he shows up, he is a dangerous underdog. He's at plus 285 right now. But he's just fighting Jonathan Brito, who is a dog, an absolute stud. It's one of those, it's a bad matchup, five days notice. You get your debut, though. I'm excited to see if Lucas can stand out. Just wanted to give him a quick little shout-out, Orlando guy uh, here in town. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a sneaky card. There's a maximum fight mm-hmm. on it. Uh, we kind of mentioned a little bit. The Sam, you guys are guys both on the over. I like that as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this is... This card is built for Grasso, really, to try to give her a signature win. And like I said, Valentina's beat literally number one, number two, number three, and number four. All the top four uh, ranked people ahead of Grasso. She's beat them all. They might do the santos Valentina rematch again, but maybe, you know, a new blood. Uh, both, the first three pay-per-views are overseas, and maybe one of those UFC 285s or 284s with Edwards and Usman as the main event, you can sneak Valentino versus Grasso as a co-main and give Grasso that shot. Just throwing it out there, but we'll see. Uh, but a big night for Grasso. It really is. I think this card is for her. 
All right. So a double uh, banana, banana bet? Like, you're like, Dave, 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 you did awesome there. You should. You Dave, should wait, Dave, 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 like time out. Don't, you're not off the hook. You just added into the banana bet too. You, you're just. You, so you, you just want me to, in it? Ryan, do you, you have just, to wear two banana hats? You're gonna, yeah, you're going to. All right. I, I'll wear it two weeks in a row. I'm that confident. <laughs> wow. Dude, I, I feel super good. At, hey, me and now we're, we're on the, uh, the, the, the good, the, the right team and. Ryan Quinn, the banana down there, but watch it. Watch uh, Grasso get tapped in the first round. <laughs> Love it. Anything else? Any guys got anything? Or we are are we getting primed for UFC 280? Are we just kind of in that? Mindset? Oh yeah, man. I was, I, we have another week. We have another week to go with that. I'm like, man. Like, All of so Eric walking around with lions, too. and everyone's in Abu Dhabi. I'm so damn excited. I'm ready for mm -hmm. the show. O'Malley and like Peter Yawn. That um, are absolutely amazing. Yeah, like yeah. the whole card is just ridiculous. Sean Brady and Bilal Muhammad could main event any fight night on this planet. They that you know, no, no disrespect to this main event, but if Brady and Muhammad was on this card, this would absolutely be the main event. That fight is on the prelims. It just did not even make the pay-per-view card. It's insane. It's a great night. Um, it's stacked, it really is stacked. And then the fight that even me, I'm kind of part of the problem as well. The main event's amazing. You know, O'Malley's the biggest name. And Jan, everyone's forgetting that TJ Dillashaw is fighting for the Bantamweight Championship again yeah. against Aljamain Sterling. And a really cool, unique, um, you would just one of those things you would, you wouldn't put those guys on a poster a year ago. It just didn't like kind of coexist. And now they're fighting. It's a, it's a cool fight. It's a big fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's nuts. It's absolutely insane. I'm super excited. I'll be doing a live stream with millions that night too. So that's going to be a fun card to do that for. Whoa. If, gee, well, look at that. She's already moving up, Ryan. Already getting yeah. a, a side payday. L Wagman. She was. It's mostly Grant. I'm just like the, I'm, I'm this like the. No, no. Forget all about I those nice things it. that we said to you about the beginning of the show about how much we love you and how about Fight Banana supports L Wagman. That's it. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> man can't wait guys be good have a great week um yeah we'll see we have a uh, our banana bet is back bet of bananas is back and uh i think i'm gonna do this ten thousand dollar outro on the way out you ready go for it welcome to betting bananas with your hosts the ruthless l wagman ryan the corner man quinn and dave